Well, hello there. Welcome back to part three of our study. I'm so excited to share this with you tonight. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, and you're tuned in to the Midweek Feel Refill, and I'm glad to share this with you. As we continue on in our series about the Great Commandments and what it really means to have the love of God, we move now to part number three. And again, let me encourage you to like, share, subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up, that bell notification, and also access all of our free PDF handouts that go along with this teaching. Listen, if you don't have access to that, you're really missing the meat and potatoes because these videos are designed to be very concise, very quick and short to whet your appetite and to get you to that place where you want more. And by completing all of the ebook assignments and those kinds of things, you're going to get that more that you really need to really develop your the theology, your theory, and your thoughts toward God. So as we move forward in part three, I want to share with you about God's love for his people. God's love for his people. If you're glad God loves you, why don't you put thank you in the comments, the words thank you in the comments. So as we move into tonight's teaching, I want you to see that the scriptures in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 38 and verse 39 are Paul's words concerning the love of God that is so unchanging, that is so amazing, and that supersedes anything that any man could ever offer towards us. Let's look at what Paul says in Romans 8, 38 and verse number 39. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When Paul is talking here in Romans chapter 8, he is talking about the fact that the love of God is limitless, boundless. It has no extremities that will ever bring it to an end. And even though we are sinners who have been saved by grace, in this passage, Paul is talking about the fact that because we're in Christ, we are now the product and the beneficiary of the limitless love of God. There is no condemnation towards us as far as God is concerned because of the love of God that has been displayed in Christ Jesus. And so in this passage, Paul just really gets down to the nitty gritty and he says to us, listen, I am absolutely convinced, persuaded that nothing at all, whether it is even dying, is not gonna separate, from, separate me from the love God has for me. Even living is not gonna change his love for me. An angel could come along and try to persuade him. It's not going to change God's love for me. Principalities has to do with evil powers in high places. But even with that, they will not persuade God from loving me. No power on earth, no power in the skies, in the atmosphere, nothing that is present or current, nothing that could ever come in the future. Regardless to how high my sins may be or how low of a depth I may lower my standards. No creature, nothing whatsoever would be able to change how God views me. And it's all because of the love of God, which he displayed through his son, Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. I don't know about you, but that just makes me so excited just to read through that passage, just to know that God loves me limitlessly. You know, people love because of, but he loves us in spite of, and he knows all of our shortcomings. He knows all of our names, but yet he never allows that to shift his feelings toward us. Are you glad about that? I know I am. You know, in order to truly follow the two great commandments that we talked about in our last session, loving God and loving others, which are what those two great commandments really consist of, we have to do something. You know what that is? We must first understand God's love toward us. Understanding his love toward us, that it is limitless, 
that no matter what extremity you go to, you can't shift God away from you, really is critical to really understanding how we must love other people. You see, the love that God has for us, it's really hard to fathom. I mean, you think about it, and we may feel so undeserving of that kind of love that is limitless, that is not based on actions, activities, even attitudes. It's hard to even even fathom that someone can love you like that. But no one can love you like God does. And that's just the bottom line. You see, the proof of God's love, my friend, for us is literally in his words and in his actions toward us. You know, when you think about it, the love of God is entirely sacrificial. When you go back to the passage that we read, and you'll see that in your PDF handout in the ebook, you'll notice that it was entirely and completely and utterly sacrificial that God sent Christ to die for us. And it was while we were yet in our sins, we weren't even born, yet we were a thought on the mind of God. Isn't that powerful? I'm telling you, God's love for us is not dependent upon our goodness. Now, that's where a whole lot of people get off the bandwagon denominationally because they believe that God's love is dependent on our actions, on our behavior, on our doings or the things that we fail to do or the things that we do that perhaps we should not be doing. And if we do those things that disagree with the thoughts, the creeds, the edicts of a certain denomination or maybe even a certain set of teaching, then there are many who believe that God hates them, God abhors them, God does not love them, and God wants to just utterly send them to a burning hell. But the love that he has for us is not based on our actions. You know why I say that? It's because Romans chapter 8, verse 37 through 39, and all of those verses in that entire chapter were all written, number one, by a man who was the chief of sinners. Before Paul became Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus who persecuted the church. Number two, I know that God's love toward us is not based on us because those words were penned way before any of us were ever created. That's how we know his word is true and how we know it supersedes our actions. You see, nothing at all can separate us from God's love. Absolutely nothing. Zero, zilch, nada. Nothing that we say or do can separate us from God's love. And this is a reaffirming word. It's a reassuring word that you and I need to hear on a daily basis. That God's love for us is not based on our actions or our activities. It's based on actions and activities that happen on the cross at Calvary. When Jesus died to take nails in his hands, he took away the impunity of our sins and he took on the debt we owed because we owed, didn't even know we owed and couldn't have paid if we did know we owed. So aren't you thankful for that kind of love? I want you to delve in this week into the ebook and all the PDFs that come along with this teaching. It's gonna bless you and enable you to delve deeper in your studies, to develop your thoughts, your theory, and your theology about the love of God. Now, as always, I want to lead you in a specific prayer, and I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Loving Father, I can only love because you first loved me. I confess that I have had a hard time wrapping my mind and my heart around your love for me. Your word declares that you, your love for me, your actions prove your love for me. The greatest proof of your love for me is Jesus. Nothing can separate me from your love. Listen, as you prayed that prayer, I don't know what you felt. I'd love to know in the comments, or you can email me. Let me know, what did it feel like praying that prayer together? Well, listen, I love sharing these times with you. 
And again, this is designed for us to be able to move quickly, to whet your appetite, yet to prepare you for a greater study as you delve into the Word of God through the free PDF ebook and handouts. Hey, in the next episode, get ready. We're going to be talking about our love for God. I think that's going to be a good study. Well, listen, God bless you. Make sure you're doing your homework. I ought to check your homework and grade it and make sure you're doing it. I'm just messing with you. I love you. God loves you. Be safe. And we look forward to sharing you, sharing with you next week.